Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. I'm Josh Davis. Michael Freeman. And if you'd like to be a part of the discussion during our live tapings, please check us out at youtube.com slash user slash Cur of Anarchy on Mondays at 9 p.m., 6 p.m. Pacific. And you can see the final product on the same channel, youtube.com slash user slash Cur of Anarchy on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. And please check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Cur of Anarchy. If you're here during the live taping, uh, you can post any questions and comments in the new thread we've made, or send us a Facebook message, and we'll certainly get to it. And now a word from our sponsors. Holly Cogburn runs Homebody, a body care, vanity, and cosmetic products company. She contracts using USD, Bitcoin, and barter. She is proud to say that she started the business without the assistance of bank loans. In her words, fuck bank loans and fuck their interest rates. For the most part, fuck banks. She has paid her startup costs out of pocket and has steadily and sustainably grown from there. She believes in a free, fair, and reputation-based market, relying on word of mouth. So please, find Holly at homebodyco.com or facebook.com slash homebodyco. Michael, we have a special guest, a not 15-year-old, but a 17-year-old uh, who goes to public school. Um, yeah, take it away, Michael. I will. Um, right. So a few... I don't know, months ago, weeks ago, it all bleeds together. Who keeps track of, of the human construct of arbitrary time, right? Um, but some, some certain time frame ago, I ran into this, this kid online, and um, he saw some of my YouTube content. I saw some of his. We decided to, uh, to go ahead and kind of highlight each other on our YouTube channels, whatever. And he's a libertarian slash anarchist YouTube content producer, 17-year-old kid, public school student. Zane, what's up, buddy? Well, first I'd like to clarify, I have dual enrollment in both public school and home school, so I take Ooh. classes at, the, like, some classes at the high school and some classes at my house. Okay. So, yeah, that's, that, that's kind of how it works, which is great because it can... I can do that with the school here, but apparently you can't do that in a lot of places. No. <laughs> and uh, the school here, uh, where are you located? I am in the Four Corners section of Colorado. So you smoke weed? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Everyone wow. here does. Everyone here does, but not me. Right on. That's okay. Make your own decisions. I know you're a you're a a pretty active person, and I know you stay physically fit, so I'd imagine that you kind of want to keep your lungs in tip-top shape. So it, It's not exactly because of a physically fit idea. It's just more like I don't like the idea of it. I don't well, know. Okay. Not my thing. Because, because, because I actually, um, actually kind of do like the idea of it, and uh, I, I'd just like to get your, your perspective on, on why. Why don't you? Or more importantly, per more importantly, would you oppose other people uh, u utilizing cannabis? <laughs> well, no, I like I wouldn't let. Okay, how should I phrase this? Is I would let everyone, if they want to, use cannabis because it's not harmful, really. It's just their choice to do it. And in fact, we just opened a medical marijuana store in my town, and I am. Super happy about it. Woohoo! Except the prices are way too high, and I'm not even going to get any. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. It's like, like I, my position is that like even if it is harmful to you, it's your body. Like my first, one of my first principles is self ownership, and I can. S I heard a a really cool Walter E. Williams um, interview earlier today on some garbage podcast run by Chris Cantwell, former. Currency of Anarchy guests, um, and he, he, he went as far as to the fact to say that it's his body. He can sell his heart if he really wants to, right? You are free to harm yourself, I think. Well, yeah, um, of course. Right on. Um, I mean, ownership over your own body. Yeah, that, that's, where, that's where I'm coming from. So, so the way we like to start this, um, and I... I I, I'm going. I think we're go, all going to appreciate your different perspective than we have. I didn't find the ideas of indi individual liberty until I was about 22, 23. Um, so, how did you come to find these ideas? 
So, um, boy, a uh, while. I kind of had, like, the same ideas throughout my life is, like, don't screw around with every anybody, and f for the most part, I, before I knew what a libertarian was, I was kind of more Republican-leaning, a uh, person that just l was against the drug war, against the war, and was for gay marriage and all that stuff, you know? And my parents were, like, totally down with that because they felt the same way. And I kind of grew on that. Then when I was like a freshman in uh, high school, I took this like political test thing to see where my ideology lines up because I hadn't been super interested in politics before then. And um, it showed Gary Johnson as the candidate I most closely align with. And this was like 2012, so it was an election year. Sure. So um, I did some research on him, and it turns out he was the governor of the great, amazing state I was born in. New Arizona. Mexico. Oh, New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice okay. Try. Okay. Um, Josh, edit that out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> New Mexico. <Yeah>. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, he, and I got to see him talk in UNM once, and it was really good. Man, that man. He's inspiring. Yeah, um I mean, I don't I don't vote. I don't I don't um I don't think that I need anybody to rule over me. I don't think that uh electing the right person is going to change an inherently fraudulent and illegitimate system. However, I don't have much negative things that I could say about somebody like Gary Johnson or Ron Paul or you know some 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 of the the libertarian candidates of the past, right? I won't yeah. be voting for for Gary Johnson, but if somebody has to be elected for president this time in 2016, I guess I hope it's him. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, you're Josh, you're going for Rand Paul, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Like my thing is, I've never voted in my life anyway. And yeah, no, I will never ever touch a Republican at all. Oh, touch a Republican? What did I say? That? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I'll, I'll be a Republican if you touch me, baby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that feels so good. I know. Um, I'll, I'll make you feel good all night, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is going nowhere. Okay, yeah. I love it. I love it. PG thirteen. See, I, I wouldn't so even have voted for I wouldn't even have voted for Ron Paul in a libertarian seat. I wouldn't even got, even have done that. I think that it is really really wrong for me to invoke my will against other people through force, regardless of what I believe. Even if I believe that you all have the right to be free, I don't want to say that. Even if I believe that you all have the right to be free and independent people, I'm still not going to force you into it. The problem is you have stated that you would push the red button if it got rid of the government, you know. And I I, I, I can't accept that, you know. I can't do that. I, well, it'd I, have to be done through education or something. Yeah, that's a pretty good point, actually. I was going to try to come up with some clever quip to shoot you down, but that's a pretty good point, and let me get back to you next week. There's sure. Yeah. Rothbard, yeah. There's a particular Rothbard essay that I want to pull a quote out of, but I just can't come up with it right now. So, so oh, cool. bring yeah, that yeah. back up next week. That's a good point. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, but I would. I would end the state right now. You have a red button on your on your on your body right now, dude. It's this whole thing. <laughs> but still. Are we touching bodies again? But yeah, don't touch me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. We, but, we get... um, if I might, can I ask you a question, Zane? Um, have you ever thought about like monetary systems at all? Are you interested in uh, like Bitcoin or altcoins or gold, silver, platinum, that crap? Okay, so I have some Bitcoin because I'm like oh, kind of iffy active on the uh, Dogecoin Reddit. Ooh. Did I say Bitcoin earlier? You did. I don't know. I did. I do not have Bitcoin. I have Dogecoin. Wow, cool. I approve. Anyways, um, so that's basically it. I do not have very much at all. I, I don't really well, know I'm, much. I'm not, 
Okay. I, I don't know yeah, much about like how cryptocurrencies and normal currencies and like commodities and I don't know gold, silver, whatever work. I, I'm I'm kind of more knowledgeable in block transaction chains, even though hey, I'm not yes, knowledgeable sir. in that. <laughs> you know what? The fact that you know the word commodity and you're 17 kind of tells me that you're already headed in the right direction. Agreed. Well, yeah. The fact that you know what the block well, is. Yeah. <laughs> you, you pop this kid. Um, I fucking the, love it. <laughs> I, me too, me too. The fact that you know what the blockchain is uh, puts you ahead of, of most people who surpass you by 40 years of experience. So, all right. Well, I mean, what's an anarchist without a little ego? <laughs> um, I'm funny. not going to make was... a comment about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the um, uh, Walmart today. Yes, I went to Walmart and, you know... In the Walmart. Corporations and all this other stuff, yes. So uh, I bought, like, uh, some cranberry juice, and uh, I was in line. Uh, the, there were, like, 12 registers at this uh, Walmart, and only three were open. And the lines were enormous. And... Uh, so uh, I only had like these two juices. The lady in front of me uh, saw me with them, and she's like, "Yeah, go ahead. You can go in front of me." And then somehow that sparked, um, you know, uh, this idea about like currencies and you know uh, ID chips in your hand. And uh, I'm like, "Have you heard of Bitcoin? Have you ever heard of gold and silver?" And uh, they were just kind of like agreeing with me, but they were definitely highly against like chips in their hand. And I was like, hey, at least some people have their heads in the right place, you know what I mean? But uh, they had uh, no idea what I was talking about when I said Bitcoin, gold, silver, that kind of thing. Uh, it's unfortunate, but maybe, maybe hopefully it sparked a little interest, but probably not. Just food for thought. Was the, was the cranberry juice for your vagina? No, it, it's... You don't it's even want to know. Just, you don't no, nope, know. nope, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> I don't think I want to know. Um, no. I'd, I'd like to sleep, sleep nightmare free tonight. Uh, yeah, there you go. With, I don't deal with woman problems very well. Um, <laughs> so, <Same>. so... <laughs> like, I understand how the woman's body works. I understand that the system needs to clean itself out, but I just don't want to do that kind of stuff, okay? No, like the pH levels and stuff, dude. Like I'm, I'm not a pool cleaner, okay. Uh, so Zane, what are we are? We are rambunctious tonight, man. But it's good. Yeah, this is, we haven't done this in two weeks, and like, what I'm really going for tonight is just to make the crowd laugh, just to make the audience laugh and have a good time, and and remember why they follow our show, right? So then maybe next week when Josh makes me look like a fool when I can't answer that question that he asked me earlier, maybe we'll have a viewer <laughs> or two, right? Yeah. Um, hey, I'm having fun. Good, man. We appreciate you coming on. But I guess to get back on track, Zane, um, what were some of your influences? Like, what were who, – who are some of your influences as far as maybe writers, e economists, uh, celebritarians, you know, whatever? Okay. Um, until, like, 2012, nobody. Like, the only – I had been educated by my parents until, like, sixth – seventh grade, and then I went to uh, high school taking uh, dual enrollment classes. I mean, like, middle school, then high school, of course. But, um, so they kind of, I got a lot of their ideas, and their ideas were kind of libertarian-based, and they kind of showed me how that worked out in historical aspects through homeschool and stuff, but not really anybody else that I can think of before then. Did they know that they were libertarian thinking? No, they were uh, Republicans before then. Huh. Wow. Interesting. Like, I think... Homeschooling uh, Republicans. I, w I would usually assume it's the opposite on that one. No, um, it depends on the group, because there are, uh, like, the... In Mancus, in the section of the world I live in, it's... Um, you got two sections of homeschoolers. You got the crazy hardcore religious ones that are absolutely re Republicans, like probably Tea Party ish, and then you got the um, like kind of a libertarian ish uh, homes 
schoolers, but more of them are like libertarian socialists. No, no, I, I, I despise left libertarians. Um, now, where you are, um, is there a kind of um, an unschool movement? Because you yes. know, next week we're going to have Sarah Perkins on the show to to and maybe John Moss to. We're going to do the unschooling edition of the Currency of Anarchy. Um, I know and some unschoolers. I, like even when I first heard the term, which was at Porkfest, of all, of all the places for me to be rubbed the wrong way, right? Um, I heard the term and I was like, well, wait a second. What if your kid only wants to learn about candy and Pokemon cards, right? Because that's all I cared about. Um, and, 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 you know, Larkin Rose, uh, one of the panels that he did, I asked him the question and he, he walked me through it. My friend John, my best friend John Moss walked me through it and uh, – you know, I've changed turn. I've, I've I've flipped the coin, and I think that's probably the best bet at this point. But I know that a lot of people, even among homeschoolers, still consider that to be a very radical idea. It really is because a lot of the homeschoolers in my homeschool group uh, kind of didn't seem like the unschoolers were as structured, and kind of looked down upon them. Especially exactly. the like Christian homeschoolers that usually basically had school at home instead of like unschooling or fun well, schooling. I, I don't want to offend anybody, and maybe I do. I, I that's what I thrive on. But <laughs> do it. Um, you know, because I think that the Christian conservative homeschoolers are teaching their kids the Bible is fact, and that is the right. complete and utter opposition of critical thinking, where unschoolers teach their children how to make their own decisions, how to come up with their own Socratic reasoning and deduce a decision based on evidence, reason, and logic rather than holy documents that were written by over 2,000 anonymous, anonymous authors over thousands of years, right? I'd agree with you with that because most of the Christian homeschoolers that I've met are very, very Christian. Like, do not get in an argument about, like, theology or anything because yep. it's, it's going to hurt. And the reason that most of these people are probably pulling their children out of school to unschool them through the Bible or whatever or to re-school them through the Bible or whatever is probably because they're afraid of ISIS teaching their kids at school or because they think that <laughs> – in God We Trust is going to be pulled out of the national anthem or the, off the dollar or out of the pledge or whatever, right? Oh, no, Nonsense. not off oh, the God. dollar. Yeah. Oh, no. So uh, I know you're, you're, you're into, like, Julie Borowski. Um, and, and so, she's my bae. Oh, she's your bae? Can, I, can we yeah. call you? Oh, there we go. I think that yep. might be, like, considered statutory rape, and I think her Rand Paul endorsement <laughs> might not, not, uh, not be in line with that. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll say it again. Julie Borowski is my bae. Zane Goodell, 2015. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and you, you Zane, you have a YouTube channel that is... Um, yes, I do. It's kind of similar to hers a little bit. The way that you... you you're kind of satrical, right? You kind of make well, everything I, I, a joke. You get your points across in a... In a a um, well-articulated manner, but you still poke a lot of fun. I think. And my voice is much better than Julie's. <laughs> oh, you're bad. Oh! <laughs> to, uh, to quote Chris Cantwell from, like, I don't want to say which Porkfest this was, but it was a comedy thing at Porkfest. Um, I trust this government like I trust speech therapy from Julie Borowski. Oh, I've seen that quote. I love that quote. I trust this government like I trust legal advice from Adam Kokesh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he lost to fucking MK Lords, who did poetry about leftism at Porkfest of all fucking places. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. The leftism. Yeah. Like Julie, Julie's not my speed. Like she's not my style more more than anything. And I definitely, definitely disagree with the whole. And she can call herself an anarchist all she wants, and I'm not sure that she does that. But she's, she does. Okay. Um, she does. It. I, I disagree with the minimalist minimalist government sentiments. I completely completely oppose that. I think it's a it's the the exact idea that put us in this position that we're in right now, um, which failed. Like the Great Experiment didn't work out very well. The Great Experiment turned into the largest empire that the world has ever seen when it was supposed to be the smallest government that the world has ever seen. So, I'm just gonna have to call that a bad idea. Um, 
worked for a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I disagree. I, I don't know. Is your little bit a six years because the Whiskey Rebellion was, you know, another tax against another drink implemented by the same government who left the other government for yeah, yeah, allegedly. Yeah, okay. okay. You know. Fair point. Um, Fair but point. what I can give Julie credit for is she brings a lot of people into these ideas. She's well known. She's well articulated. She does say some really good things, and um, she brings a lot more people into my team than than I do. So, what can I say? Like, mm. if you have a female celebritarian, they're gonna get a lot more hits on YouTube than like I don't know some kid from Rhode Island smoking weed. <laughs> You're not. You're not wrong. <laughs> Very good point, sir. I don't have the boobs. That's why, man. See? I'm uh, I got nothing, it. dude. Because you'd be surprised. A lot of people actually do like the smoking weed and talking shit thing. There is a, there is a, tar a target audience there, like we were talking about last night, right? Um, yeah. And, yeah, that's cool. I, I unfortunately at this point think that the the, um, the caliber of most, most women – who are prominent figureheads in the liberty, or prominent figures in the liberty movement? It's just at an all-time low. Um, I think most of them are liars and, and incredible, copying other people's ideas and intellectually dishonest. Unfortunately, but uh, yeah, let me let me expand on that, Michael. Please, because uh, I was on uh, Facebook because uh, I'm on it a little bit too often lately. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I really am. Um, so I was on someone's. Facebook profile debating about a dog picture she posted. Yep. I already and, uh, oh, you saw that? Yeah. So basically, uh, it was she's like, "Oh, isn't this dog cute?" And it was like this rough police dog. You know, the the officer is holding you know the leash. German Shepherd, right? Right on. Sure. And basically, it's just a little aggressive, and uh, you know. So I I stated that yeah, some are just a little bit violent, and it goes against the very idea of liberty. And it, <clears throat> you know, it's a police dog, you know, just looking for drugs, which is just a substance. So uh, it's Michael's it, looking it for drugs too. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't use drugs, man. I, I use. I use. I just trade freely. That's all. All natural yeah. cannabinoids. Yeah, Flower. there's really nothing wrong with any drug. It, it really isn't. Be, uh, it's. I'll I just, mean, it may be bad for the system, but really, it's your own. You know, do what you will. Whatever. I mean. See, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I, well, with the first mm -hmm. part, because I totally agree with the second part. Heroin is poison. It is. It is poison. Of course. Right? And yeah, it, I, it's I, bad I would call for the body. Of course. Bad, right? But you're free to be bad to yourself. Whatever. Right. Who am exactly. I to stop you from hurting your body? If it's, if it's yours, if it's really yours, do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if I misspoke, but I think no. we're on the same page about this. Hmm. Um, yeah, the, the idea was, uh, you know. Uh, someone trained this dog to be aggressive. Uh, normally, you know, animals aren't this aggressive. You know, they might be aggressive in order to eat, but or be defensive. But that's really it. You know, in nature, that's all that ever happens. And then, you know, you get, uh, you know, aggressive people, you know, polluting the minds of animals and other minds of humans. And, you know, society gets all fucked up. And, you know, and she's like, oh, it's just my opinion. And I'm like, ugh. ugh. And then there, there's nothing worse downhill. that I want to end an argument on than, well, that's my opinion and that's your opinion. Or let's just ad agree to disagree. Because that's not necessarily the case when it comes to philosophy or economics or sociology, right? Like, either you are right, right or you are wrong. Either yeah, you are a sophist or you are a philosopher, and that needs to be, in my opinion, viciously attacked. Well Bad said. Idea. People don't make up that a point. Well said. Sophist and uh, philosophy, totally yeah. different paradigms. The, the, anyway. in, my, in my personal opinion, the difference between the two is a sophist is coming from an opinion and building facts up to that opinion, up to that deduced end result, right? Where a philosopher is going to take information and figure out what the end result is. He goes all the way. Yeah, exactly. All the way with the logic. 
Yes, absolutely. Uh, I hate that word. Um, <laughs> but that's it, Michael. It is, that's it, what is. it is. I know, I know. <laughs> it's empirical. It's fact-based and reason-based. It's not just like, I think that I want to think this, and I want to portray this message, so I'm going to manipulate facts in order to get up to it. That's, right. that's a cancer uh, on truth. That is something that needs to be viciously attacked and viciously discredited, or else why am I... What am I doing here? Right. My, if my goal is the truth and peace and freedom, then I need to attack things that lie about about these ideas. Right. Yeah, actually, uh, going along the same lines about uh, this animal thing, if you take uh, a lion tamer, a lion tamer takes out that self-defense mechanism of the animal, and uh, it's unnatural, and it kind of makes that lion or tiger or whatever, they make them, like, pathetic. You know, why would you want to see a pathetic lion? You know, I, <laughs> that's not I, what you're going to see. One of my least favorite places in the world is the zoo. And I yeah. don't want to get into the arguments about animals being property and all that stuff, like, another Love time. Um, yeah. and I don't even know where I stand. I don't. Um, but, like, why do I want to go watch, watch creatures who live and breathe and experience pain and emotion and love and all these things. Like, why do I want to go watch them be in cages and be deprived of their liberty and probably not fed very well and poked at by little kids and have rocks thrown at them and all this crazy shit, right? Like, why do I want to go watch that? I, d I don't. They're totally it's, depressed. Exactly. It's a it, horrible that's thing. That's problem. Yeah. I, I don't ever want it. I don't like that stuff. I don't think that any living organism should be tamed or caged or deprived of their individual liberty. Right. Well, As the, the guy question, who has a dog would in Would you nature. rather go to the zoo or would you would you rather go watch American Sniper? Oh, um I would, I would actually watch American Sniper. Um mm. you know, I'm a devout anarchist. I oppose the state nearly violently, right? Like philosophically yeah. violently but not in a practical manner. Um well, yeah. But I enjoy films. I enjoy cinematography. I enjoy movies. I particularly enjoy Clint Eastwood's movies. And I understand yeah. it's a propaganda piece. I understand it's a it's a hit piece to um, you know against the the Arabs or whatever. Um, but maybe I can go sit down and empirically watch that. If I go to the zoo, I'm going to put myself in in, in emotional pain. You know. Yeah. And Bradley uh, okay, Cooper's so not even that very bad. Good point. Like, Bradley Cooper's a pretty good actor. Clint Eastwood's a pretty good director. Like, if you like war movies, I'm sure it's probably a pretty good film. But if you like truth, reason, evidence, logic, then it's probably not your thing. It's, but it's just, a, it's just a movie. Like, if, if, if American Sniper is the thing that I need to place my effort in, I'm going to lose this fight so, so very, very bad. Because I think that's what they... I don't know who they is. I really don't. But I think that's what they want, right? Let's divide the the masses over this stupid film about some guy who's probably lying about all of it and make them fight each other about that and let's, uh, you know, let's just skip over net neutrality. Let's just skip over the fact that the police kill more people than mm -hmm. Iraq or Afghanistan ever did, right? Or that Bitcoin, silver, and gold are going down every day. What's going on there? All right. Silver, no, silver went up this morning. Oh, yay. It's still in the 15s. Something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking the one time I try to be optimistic. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Gonna take it back. Uh, yeah, so actually, uh, just let's go over these prices. Last time we did this show uh, was February 23rd, so it's three weeks later. Um... I checked the prices tonight at 8:21. Tonight being uh, March 16th, right after St. Patrick's Day. I'm not going to get into that. Um, yeah, the last time uh, silver was 16.36. Tonight it's 15.63. That's 73 cents. That's a 4.5 percent change. Gold went from 12.03.97 to 11.56.20. That's 47.77. It's 4%, not really all that bad for three weeks. Uh, Bitcoin went up uh, from 238.59 to 290.23. That's 51.64. That's 
Right. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, the difference in the prices. Uh, again, this has been a three-week difference as opposed to one week. So, a uh, bit of, uh, you know, a rocky change with Bitcoin. Uh, I'm not really sure how it's been going on over the last few weeks. Have you been checking the prices, Zane, lately? Or are you're not that no, hard I, into I don't, Bitcoin? I don't check prices on anything because I'm really busy, like liking a political memes on Facebook and like going to school and working on Spanish and stuff and I, I have track and stuff so I all this economic yeah. stuff is it goes over my head it's like not yeah. too far over but I mean I, I don't have I have a lot of time or interest in it right now maybe later yeah yeah you will yeah I know you will yeah right on uh, at least, he's, be, at least uh, he's honest man arrogant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I know a lot of people what are you talking who, who about? I love Bitcoin. <laughs> I know a lot of people who, when asked the question that you were just asked, are not going to be like, "Oh, it just goes over my head." They're going to lie to you and give you bad information and try to know what they're talking about. Right, and I'd have to cut it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, seriously, it's really uh, important to know this stuff, in my opinion, but more for the long term. Uh, you know, day to day, it's not going to matter. It really doesn't, because you know the prices are volatile. It'll go. You know, for example, silver will go up two bucks, and then it'll go down two bucks, and then it'll keep on going. For down, example, right? go up, Bitcoin, and then it'll go down. For example, Bitcoin will go up to fifteen hundred dollars, and then down to two sixty five. Yeah, that kind of happened, but over three years. Yeah. Again, long term, long term. I guess so I should it, use this. I, I want to take this, use this opportunity to jump into this uh, this event I went to a few weeks ago, right in right in JB's backyard, actually. Um, Indeed, I, and I had no idea you were going to go <laughs> until like that day. Yeah, sorry, man. Um, if no, you're not a cool. if you're not a student, it was like 150 bucks, though. Not that I'm a student anymore. I just still have my ID, and it's still valid. Um, so I went to the to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, like the most prominent. Um, um, architectural MIT. and engineering school in, in the entire world, MIT, yeah. um, right down by Boston over there. And uh, I went to the MIT Bitcoin Expo 2015. Um, it was such a good... I saw some videos about that. Yeah, it was a really good time, man. Um, I got to interview the guy who does the graphics for our show, uh, who also runs the Arts of Not Being Governed dot com, not being... Um, I'm sorry, notbeinggoverned.com, and the arts of not being governed on Facebook. He runs cryptographics.com, who is the person who did our graphics for this show free of charge. Um, yeah. Jamie Redman, and I got to you know get rack his mind a little bit and see what's up, and uh, had a good time doing that. He just confirmed, well, we didn't confirm because we didn't set a day, but he's going to be our guest on on here within the next few weeks. He's a busy guy, and as Josh and I were talking about earlier. If people are too busy making us more free, we're okay with them not coming on the show, right? Um, so I got to do that. I got to see uh, Charlie Lee, the creator of, of Litecoin, do like a 35-minute speech. Uh, I got to see Andreas Antonopoulos demolish the state, demolish every anti-Bitcoin sentiment that you could ever come up with. Um, this third panel I watched was, you know, about... Bitcoins and and regulation and legality and all this stuff and you know I thought two out of the three lawyers on the stage were talking about talking in support of the state and talking about potentially turning Bitcoin into well fiat from from what I gathered and uh, Andrea Santanopoulos got up there and he's like if you guys if you people th uh, you know he, he got up in the crowd there was microphones in the crowd for uh, crowd questions and he walked up and asked he's like if you people think that bitcoin is doing well because of the state rather than in spite of it you need your legal degrees taken away from you right and he wrecked him he was furious and it was it was it was beautiful um yeah, it was a really, really, really good time. I'm definitely going next year, too. Um, and I think it's only going to expand. There's this whole uh, MIT Bitcoin club, and of all the places that I want Bitcoin to be to be studied, I think that might be the spot, right? The smartest engineers, architects, and computer, you know, computer engineers in the world? Yeah, please, please. 
So I suggest you guys check check that out. MIT Bitcoin Expo uh, 2015 was this year. Obviously, next year will be 2016. I put out a few videos about it myself. Andrea Antonopoulos on Bitcoin MIT 2015 and uh, abolishing authority with Jamie Redman at Bitcoin Expo 2015. Catch that on my YouTube channel, Michael Freeman. And here's to shameless self promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> No, no, but really, man, I wish, I wish that Josh, Josh, I wish that you and I had talked about that uh, beforehand. Uh, I wasn't sure that I was going to go until very soon before. So, um, I, I'm not sure I would have been able to make it. I think I was uh, in New York at that time, but yeah, you were. Uh, it would have been awesome because uh, I, it seemed like you needed uh, some technical assistance. Uh, but yeah. I would have, I would have loved to be there. Yeah, for sure. MIT, it's, it's seriously, it's right down the street, in a way. Yeah, I, so. I, I kind of needed my computer, my com, my technical computer friend to be with me for that one. I, I'll be humble <laughs> like Zane. I'll take Zane's, uh, Zane's example and be humble because whenever it comes to techie Bitcoin stuff, no, me idea. humble, nah. <laughs> the one who, the, the kid who just admits that economics goes over his head, Meh, I'd call that humble. It, it, well, that does. I, I do know. I can name every capital of every country if you want some ego. No, I don't even. Oh. Believe in bo- I don't even believe in borders, man. Yeah, that, oh, yeah. that <laughs> that's nothing to be proud of. <laughs> no, I'm I can count. I can count fifty stars on the American flag. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, what else uh, can we talk about? Um, I, I thought you uh, didn't. You have an article you wanted to touch upon some some police brutality happening in. Uh, I don't remember it. what it state was, you said. Uh, apparently, it was March first. I couldn't find a name, but basically, uh, what happened was, uh, I think it was a group of cops, like seven or eight cops. Uh, where uh, three of them or four of them were kind of keeping others away uh, to not intrude on what the other cops were doing, which was pulling this homeless guy's gun and, um, f- you know, basically beating him up, tasering him, and then killing him with the, his own gun. Wait, he had That's a gun? What happened. Uh, he had a gun, yes. I don't care, so, but just for the audience's sake, was this yeah. legal? Was he a felon? Um, was he allowed to be carrying a, a firearm? I Yeah, that's another thing. I couldn't find any more information than that except for witness accounts. That's sure. all. Yeah, it, it's, it was, uh, it, it's not like it was covered up. I mean, it was in the LA Times, which is amazing. But uh, this was a couple weeks ago, and I didn't follow through with it much more than that. So I don't know. Uh, and, but I I did see a video, and it was reposted and reposted on Facebook multiple times. So you know, you should have got a you know a view of it. But um, I'm sure I did, man. It, but like, and I. Yeah. At this point, I can't watch it anymore. I can't watch. I can't watch people be murdered by the people whose job is to extort money from them anymore. If I continue to, watch, and I had a big, a big um, phase where I was watching, you know, cop blocker videos or like police brutality videos every day for like three hours, right? And yeah. if I continued to do that, I'm going to be one of these radical people who goes out and starts to um, physically act, right? And I don't want to do that because I understand how impractical it is. I kind of like breathing, right? Yeah. Um, and as these things turn out, just like Freen, just like uh, the two kids in Las Vegas last year, um, um, Amanda and uh, – yeah, that's all I got. I'm sorry. I don't remember that's their names. But the two kids who like – they went up and made a bunch of Facebook posts about the revolution. They went out to the uh, the, the Bundy Ranch there. And, and they were asked to leave by some of the people who headed that up because they were, I don't know, convicted criminals or too radical or something. And uh, then they went in and, and went into a store and, and, and shot uh, two cop, a cop who was just eating lunch. 
and you know eventually did a murder suicide right but what i think the 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 problem with that is is it doesn't limit the state it doesn't stop the state it only fucking promotes it like if yeah. if people go out and shoot cops that's going to give the cops every reason for these tanks and the militarization and the drastic increases in numbers and you know riot gear and all this crazy stuff and and unfortunately it's not only not effective it's not only not intuitive or productive it, it is counterproductive going out and hurting the police right. like that is going to make the world less free that's going to make more cops and more tanks more checkpoints right i mean you're I'm morally justified to as, do it well, justified yes be. but only if people actually see it and understand it and recognize it as justified but uh, the simply put evil begets evil you know that's exactly what you're saying you know it, the more violence you um, put across the more violence that the government's going to put across yes it, I, I I almost agree with you but at the same time right. where do you draw the line mm -hmm. where do you, if people come to your house Josh and steal your pretty flag and your new headphones and awesome microphone and point guns at a za right when when <laughs> When does violence not beget violence? When, when I, I don't know. It's, no, I don't know how to that, put this that's into words. Obviously, that, that's obviously going to uh, be okay with most people. You know, it's self-defense. A lot of people, or there are some people, especially in this state, that would say, no, it's not justified for me to react in kind. But... Uh, no, it, for most of us, that would be obviously okay. Um, but the problem is a lot of people say that the government is justified, and it's not. People don't understand that it starts with theft. It starts with taxation. They don't get that. So that's the problem that we're dealing with. You know, we're, we're dealing with people that are indoctrinated. That's all it is. So sure. we have to put that across as... We have to state that we have to. We, we basically have to stop feeding the beast in one way or another, you know. And, and yes, I'm one of those that has to pay taxes, but I'm not going to just stop unless we all stop or most of us stop, because then oh, that so so it's a message. so it's a it's a pack mentality thing. So it's a let me yeah, think unfortunately this yes. It so is. it's a collectivist idea. Unfortunately, because I don't want to die. I don't want to die, dude. No, I get you. I get you, Josh, man. I do. Like, like, yeah. yeah, maybe I don't file taxes and that kind of thing. But you got you know you of all people know how much beer I drink. So believe how much sales tax I pay, right? Oh sure. Le like before we went live earlier today, I paraphrased Tony Styles, and I'm gonna do it again. There are no anarchists in, in at least in America. There are no anarchists. We are anarchist wannabes. But at the same time, you have to take self-preservation into an account. You are not going to be free if you are dead. You're not going to be free if you're in a cage. If you don't pay taxes, at least from what – and you're in Massachusetts too. That's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother beast. But if you don't pay taxes, they're at least going to come try to take your stuff. And I don't think you're going to let them take your stuff. So right. you're not going to survive basically. So it makes more sense to just pay them. As, live as, free or die, I guess. Well, live or <laughs> live or uh, uh, oh god, <laughs> live million. or die. Yeah, right. yeah, pretty much. Live or die. Uh, right. Oh. You're not going to be free if you're dead. You're not. Live or die. It, actually, it's more. Uh, you know, it's in the Declaration of Independence. Yes, I'm quoting that document. Oh god. No. But life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right. Life. There is no liberty without life. There's no life without liberty. They go hand in hand. Well, it, it, it I, literally I, is I life and liberty all, or death. I think that all three of us right here are empirical evidence of the fact that there is life without liberty. No, that's called unless, unless you unless opinion. you're free, Josh. Unless you're free, Josh. Are you are you free? I, I don't think so. I'm free, mm. but I'm I see the way I see it. I'm. I'm just existing. I, I don't have actual life. You know, I don't have my own wings, ah. as it were. You, that's the difference. You know, okay. it's not just uh, it's existence, uh, wow. it's slavery. You that's really saying? that's really deep, Josh. You don't and you don't even utilize cannabis products. <laughs> no, see, my 
thing is, it's like it, a real Jaden Smith. About it, it, <laughs> what happened? You're no, like a real Jaden Smith, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I, my thing is, I'm just, uh, I, I've been thinking it's, it, you know, these uh, founding fathers haven't uh, been all that far off the base. Uh, but, you know, a lot I of them were more evil than they let on, obviously. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, I think that, like, um, owning people and genocide is, is kind of off base myself. Right, that's kind of what we're doing like, right I don't, now. Like, I don't really care about... by a state. Yeah, I mean, as far as the Founding Fathers go, like, I don't really care about their philosophy when they're owning people and, like, binding me into violent servitude, right? Right, yeah, I agree. You know, you, you, you know my intentions argument that I always go back to, right? I understand, but I'm saying at least they tried... They covered up their bullshit with... Uh, <laughs> Actual philosophy, you know, life and liberty and all this other yeah. stuff. And then, yeah, it, the state is a bunch of bullshit. I think it's you know a lie. I, mean? I, I, Yeah, I think it's all a lie, really. Like, I'm not sure that, like, George Washington ever existed, really. Um, like, because how, how would I know that? How would I even prove that? All I'm, all I'm doing is being told, um, told these things by my oppressors. So I'm, I'm kind of inclined not to believe what they tell me, right? And, and Who that's, cares? That's a, yeah, exactly. That's my point. Like the ride of Revere is a very in, used to be a very influential story to me. I know that it's not true. I know that it didn't happen that way. But at the same time, it's a really right. nice fable. Um, yeah. Right. Like I like Star Wars. Right, just like the whole story of Socrates. Yeah, <laughs> well, wow. I don't know. I'm pretty sure the the Bible kind of is like let's kill the gays and stuff. So. Eh. Nah. It's only like a little part. Levi Leviticus in the Old Testament's only a little part. Pretty sure yeah, that was the main. The yeah, main just don't eat, quite don't a, eat, don't quite eat oysters, years. man. Yeah. You're good to hell for that. Yeah. Yep. You but know. To um, I me, mean, the only good part of the Bible is the Ten Commandments, and you don't even need all of it. Oh, you, I'm going to put somebody. You need like, put somebody don't on steal blast. and don't murder. I'm going to put somebody on blast here, and I'm going to tag him when I share this video. And I'll even tell him, I don't have, I can't see the time here, but there's a very particular Christian anarchist whose perspective I want to get on this show. He's very Please. articulating. He's a very smart kid. Him and I might disagree yeah. on a few things. But, Is it uh, a NAND? No, it, it, Cor Corey McCall. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Corey McCall being called to the stage. Um, no, 55. <laughs> Please stand up. Please stand up. Gosh, next time, next time you make a commercial, use that voice, okay? Um, All right, I will. <laughs> but right, he has a really good perspective, and he he would never point a gun at me to force me to do a damn thing. So I want to get him on the show and give him the opportunity to try to convince me into Christian anarchism. I'm not the most overly educated atheist. I'm not. But I don't believe. I have no evidence of believing. If you can provide that to me, get, pr give it to me in in an, an empirical and factual way, I might change my mind. And I challenge you, Corey. Uh, it's funny. Yeah. You'd rather debate about religion, but not morality. <laughs> uh. <laughs> at, the, at this, no, no, I'm ready. I'm like we're too late in the show to start that now. But no, I'm actually ready. I'm ready to do it. Oh, word. I, yeah, I don't have a position anymore. I don't care, dude. I don't care yeah. what words. No, it you doesn't matter. Describe the things that you, yeah. you care about. Like, if you're pointing guns at people, you're immoral it, by the definition of the term. I think. And uh, when it comes to nihilism, objectivism, subjectivism, this whole thing, I just don't care. I just don't care. Anymore. Just really don't. Like, I yeah. want to. You just don't do care what's... about nihilism. I'm sorry. You don't kill, care about nihilism. That's great. Oh, oh, I see. I see. <laughs> I like puns. Good, good. I didn't even catch that. It's um, not even a pun. Well, I think that nihilism is an entirely misconstrued concept because people think that, like, we'll take nihilism like people will take anarchism. Like, anarchism means Molotov cocktails and pitchforks and, like, I don't know, burning banks down or something like that, right? And people at the same time will think that nihilism means a lack of morality and that you believe in doing what is immoral where that's just entirely not the case it's just different out, it's just a different outlook on the way that people behave or the way that people make decisions 
I well, think... I, I, I can kind of attest for the anarchy analogy with the Molotov cocktails and stuff because right. my grandfather owned a bank in the 60s. Oh, like, God. And that was when the whole anarchist movement was just starting, and he got uh, through the uh, I'm gonna have, I'm really gonna have to disagree with you on the fact that the anarchism movement started in the '60s. Like well, Henry David didn't. Thoreau kind of was alive hundreds of years ago. There's an argument for Locke, you know, Socrates, maybe. I'm not gonna argue that, okay? Uh, but that's kind of like the stereotypical Molotov cocktail anarchists you imagine. Right? Yep. The black so, masks like, over their faces and stuff. Yeah, they were causing a lot of trouble <laughs> up at his bank because he's like an investment bank or whatever. I don't know. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would go as far as to say that the black bloc anarchist movement started in the 60s. This violent um, okay. let's destroy private property movement or whatever they do, right? Yeah. Like the radical activists, anarcho-communists. Yeah, that, yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sure. So so what happened? Basically, they caused a lot of trouble. Like, it gave anarchists a really bad name in that day and age. I guess it wasn't really, it wasn't really like, too much of a common term before then, wasn't it? So, yeah. And, like, I don't know. My father and my mother have heard of those, and that's the idea they get when they hear anarchy. So when I tell them about, like, anarchy and, like, the dissolution of a state, they're just like, eh, I don't know, man. Yeah. And <laughs> Like, the last and, time and that I heard... The last time that I heard the word anarchy used in popular in, in, in recent popular culture was in The Purge 2, a movie about people oh slaughtering God. each other, right? So I right. think that it is it is intentional that people don't know what that word means. Right. Absolutely. The, the last time I heard the word anarchy is uh it was that dumb Democrat in Congress calling the Republicans anarchists. Um, I don't watch watch the the uh, the politics of our lives anymore. I don't, but I do know the. I don't know who said. <laughs> I don't know who said this, but I did see it a few weeks ago. And dude, at this point, this is the fifteenth time I've been classified as a domestic terrorist already. I just, I'm just over it, really. Even when I was like a neocon constitutionalist, I was classified as a as a domestic terrorist. So whatever, just just lump me in with ISIS. It's okay, whatever. Yeah, just more words. Words. It's just soup salad. That's all, man. ISIS Alphabet is better soup. than the government. I agree with you. They're at least trying to make a free competitive currency. They're at least mm -hmm. not using fiat. They're backing it, dude. Right? Mm -hmm. They're also chopping. If if they exist, I still can't prove that. But if they exist, they're like chopping people's heads off, and that's terrible. But I'm pretty sure the American government's doing that stuff too. Maybe not with machetes, but definitely with drones. Definitely with with all kinds of mil of military horrible action, right? Well, the Islamic State is exactly that, a state, and they're not as an influential state as the American government. And the American government hates the Islamic State, so it's all-out war. Well, well, well it it, my problem is, time out, you can't... Because it's not war, because Obama's <laughs> against war. I forgot. Yeah. Sorry. See, see, this can't be true. <laughs> Okay, ISIS cannot be a real thing because how can Islam, uh, which is a religion across the world, have a state that exists only in one place? I mean, uh, you know, I can actually come up with a thing. pretty good explanation. How about the Vatican, JB? Yes, agreed. But it's How about one Vatican little tiny City? thing, and they they recognize it with borders and everything. Yeah. Uh, see, see, that's that's the thing. That I mean, it really is a thing. You know, it's, where the problem the problem here is is that is that there's no nothing is defined, right? There, just right. like the the war on terror or the war on ISIS or the war, we're we're just talking about a war on an idea. ISIS is. I don't think that ISIS is right. a state. I think that ISIS might yeah. be a loose knit group of people who are all rallying around the same. Let's go fuck shit up because our countries have been being invaded for. 30 years, right? And I can't and that's entirely it, it disagree with that. 
Yeah, I, I, That's only if it exists. I think I don't have really any tinfoil around to put to put up on here, but but I I agree with you, man. I all yeah. I know about ISIS, and I have been in that country. I've been in numerous of the countries that they're talking about, supposed or alleged to be operating in. The only time that I've ever heard that term is from other libertarians who are discussing ridiculous politics, and current events, and mass media manipulation through the mass media, through the politicians, and through other special interest groups that have corporate political interests. Right. So I have no reason to believe that. And I know that sounds crazy, but if you believe in reason, evidence, and logic, and believing what you can prove to be real, I cannot prove ISIS to be real. Socrates would smack me right in my face if I said that I – I'm sorry, if I said that I could. Yeah, that, that's the thing. So it's not actually belief. You're, you're, you know that it can't be real unless you get more evidence, basically, at this point. Uh, I guess I would that's... have to – yeah, I would have to call myself agnostic on the topic. I'm yeah, inclined. Sure. I'm inclined to not believe. I'm inclined to believe that the state is incentivized to lie to me. So I'm inclined to initially throw out their narrative. Right. So the thing is, uh, the only way you could uh, nail this in the coffin, if you will, is if you got more evidence and it lined up. And the thing is, you have to remember. Uh, people are innocent before proven guilty, right? <laughs> so, so you. So you can catch us. He'll prove so it. You, so the you can United catch States us judicial process. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Quoting the oh. United States judicial <laughs> process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you can catch us next week here on the currency of anarchy on the live from Iraq. Is ISIS real edition? <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. No, no I'm. Do I want to go? I'm all. <laughs> no, no, I'm right. all. I'm all set, buddy. I'm all for it. If if Go, you're buying the plane, Josh, if you're gonna fork up the money for those plane tickets, let's just do it in Maui instead, okay? I'm I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't ride planes because of the TSA. I I just won't go on yet. Sa I won't ride planes because of the TSA. Says the guy who willfully lives in Massachusetts. Ooh. That's why I'm moving. <laughs> <It's an idiot. laughs> oh oh damn oh damn. Ah love, man, dude, loves, you're killing me. Come today. off, baby. <laughs> when when, right, uh, yeah. when when do yeah well, no okay uh, I was just gonna ask yeah. when when are you going up <laughs> what to New Hampshire yeah yeah I'll be moving uh in June actually now uh, I thought it was yeah. gonna be July but it'll be June uh probably June first hopefully and you're uh, going I should say hopefully not probably and that's to Nashua yeah. Nashua. Now, which is are you literally ten minutes away from here? <laughs> are you a uh, Are you going to become, or are you already a, a a member of the Free State Project? I have not, and I might, but kind of doubt it. We'll see what happens. Okay. Um. Yeah, but I'm gonna wrap up the show, Zane. Uh, where can we find your YouTube channel, Zane? Um, I don't actually know the URL, but it's. <laughs> You you can search my name is just Zane Goodell. It's like Jane Goodall, you know that primate specialist, whatever biologist. Just nope. Zane and an E instead of an A in Goodell. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to check Zane out, for any of you guys who follow my YouTube stuff, um, yeah, check me out. Yeah, I have him highlighted, and we're we're definitely going to after the fact before this this official video comes out, I'll get the link from him. Uh, privately, and we'll make sure to incorporate it into the video. All right. Nice. Yeah, so uh, next week, uh, do we have anybody lined up next week, Michael? We do, we do. We have uh, Sarah Perkins lined up next week. She is a an yeah. unschooling mother. I think she might live on a farm or something like that. Uh, she runs a Facebook page called Dirty Anarchist Kids, which, you know what? I don't I want to page. explain it. Yeah, just think of it as you will. It means pitchforks, Molotov cocktails, mud, and children. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, definitely um, a lot of mud. Yeah. Yeah, no, Those it's are some of my favorite things. Yeah. <laughs> um, so check her out. She'll be on next week. We might bring in uh, another regular Currency of Anarchy guest, but we have yet to talk to him about it, so I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, but we're probably. Yeah. <laughs> we're probably going to do the unschool edition of the Currency of Anarchy, so. Though, Zane, as a matter of fact, Josh, why don't you take it away? 
Okay, yeah. yeah. Zane, we'd like to invite you in, I believe in two weeks, uh, we're going to have a roundtable discussion. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, we'll probably be talking about a slew of things, and uh, we'll just, you know, have uh, probably five or, or probably about four or five guests, or four guests. I, I thought like you were going to end that with beers for some reason. Beers. Oh. No, no, that's I'll end it with beers. That's implied. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, whoa, 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 Josh, you're you're talking to a minor. I don't care. I'm an anarchist. Who cares? <laughs> Look, uh, so you do what you will. Nasty. I'll do what I will. I'm gonna have my coffee because that's usually what I do. I mean, here, coffee. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, the roundtable discussion is probably in about two weeks, I believe that's right. And um, next week we'll have Sarah, and uh, that will be March 23rd is the live show. And that show will be on the air, uh, edited uh, March 25th. So everyone, thank you very much for watching, and take care of yourselves.